In this week's World War II Miniature Wargaming Boot Camp, Wardrobe will discuss the too long, don't watch version, starter sets, now in vibrant color. Hey all, what's up? Welcome to the series, and thanks for that introduction, uh, narrator dude. All right, so you've read a great World War II book, you've seen a movie, TV show, you saw something being played in a store convention, or you know, maybe you've uh, enjoyed a, a documentary. You've, uh, you're familiar with Call of Duty, uh, maybe even some board games like Memoir 44, Risk, and others. Um, but you're thinking back to those days when you were playing with army men. You set them up and you just play with them. You just, you know, set them up and then you'd put them away and that'd be it. Well, the great thing is this. You can use those minis to recreate battles of World War II. Ever since H.G. Wells, and probably before that, uh, people have been recreating historic battles with miniatures. You know, setting some parameters, having a little bit of rules, maybe it's dice, maybe it's some other things that help determine who wins a battle. But, you know, you can prove your generalship against your rival and you can, you know, uh, maybe even change the, the tide of history and you're certainly going to learn a lot about the history that you're, you're playing. In this series, I'm going to walk you through some of the basics of gaming miniatures, specifically in World War II and specifically in land combat. I'll talk about naval and air at another time, but I have the most experience with land, so we're going to start there. After this uh, particular boot camp class, the next ones are going to talk about the eras and theaters of the, of the war. We're going to talk about the scales of the miniatures you're going to play with. We're going to talk about the size of the armies and battles that you can fight. We'll talk about some of the um, tools you can have, the models and the terrain, and some other resources to help you out and get started in the hobby. Now I'm going to cover really high level basics. And really, the goal is to point you in a direction to start you moving down that uh, path in this journey of a miniature World War II wargaming. I started this hobby when I was 40. As the filming of this, I'm 50. And, and I did because I saw a friend painting up some of the Space Hulk minis uh, that he had. Now, he had painted uh, 40K minis years before in college, but he wanted to make the game a little bit more immersive and enjoyable, so he decided to paint them up. And so I sat with him as he did this, and I, as I watched him, I thought, wow, it is not as hard as I thought it was. I, I don't know why I thought it was hard, but I did. And even as a kid, all the way up into the age. And as I watched him paint, I thought, wow, it's not that hard. Now, what is hard is to be amazing at painting and to have really lifelike or, you know, really cool color schemes. That takes a lot of work. But it doesn't take a lot of work to do, put, you know, three to five coats of paint on a mini to make it look good. You can even do three coats. And so, and look. My preference is, if I had the money, I would pay someone to build my army, paint my army, build my terrain, and I would just play the games. Because that's what I want to do, play the games. And as you go down this journey, you're going to find out some of the parts are going to be more enjoyable than others. Alright, so like any hobby, this is a rabbit hole. And, and I, but I want to point you in the direction to give this uh, hobby a try. So I'm choosing two products that will give you everything you need to do to play an entry-level game. Because my goal is this. I want you to be able to buy a set and you have almost like a board game, you, almost, you have almost everything you need to get playing. So, and I'll cover that. So, both these games I'm going to recommend have large communities, and you can often find a game anywhere to play and find someone to play a game with you. Now, understand, these games are designed to be played in the, either a tournament type of setting or kind of point-based. So you're really building an army, you know, based on a, some criteria that are set by the games and, you know, like you have a 300 points or a thousand points and you're choosing tanks and men and artillery and whatever to meet that point level. The goal being to, you know, have two equal armies to, you know, you know, challenge you against uh, each other. So they're not necessarily based around a specific battle. You're just playing, we're going to go for this hill or we're going to go that. So that's kind of how they're designed. Again, they're designed to get people into the hobby. And really, remember, my goal with this is I want you to, you know, find a friend. I want you to buy it, build it, and play it. So, now, the thing with miniature gaming is it's not, it's a little more complicated than a board game in that you do have to prep some minis. Okay, if you want to play larger games, think maybe 30 to even 100 miniatures, because that sounds appealing to you, 3 to 20 tanks, battling it over out it's with smaller miniatures and smaller terrain that, to save on cost and storage, or maybe to fit the table you have, then I would recommend a game called Flames of War. It's in its fourth edition, has been around for years, has a large player base, and there are a couple sets that I want to point out to you to give you everything to get going. Now, the biggest one, and it retails for around $50 here or there, you know, give or take, 
Um, and it's called Hit the Beach. It's their biggest one. And you get US Airborne, German Panzer Grenadiers, US and German tanks, and some anti-tank guns. And you get bases for it. You get a rule book and you get dice. So you have almost everything you need to play that game. You might have to make some little tokens to kind of remember some things in the game. But for the most part, you can pop that out. There's even a little starter, uh, you know, quick rules to get you going. And uh, they, then they have the full rule book. It's a mini version, but it is a full rule book. So you wouldn't need another rule book to expand into the, into the game. Now, the vehicles do require assembly. A few of the miniature, the soldiers may require them, but very minimal. Really, the toughest part is building those tanks and gluing those uh, minis to the, um, to the bases. They give you instructions how to do that. Now, I'm going to include links to these um, in a blog post that I'm going to have, so you can click right to them. They're not affiliate links or anything like that, so, but they do have an article that explains kind of what the box is made up of. Of course, there's a store to buy it. Now, they have a couple other starter sets. They have the Fury starter set as well. Now, this is just tanks. Smaller, I'm going to say $25 to $30. It really depends on where you live and the time of year. But those are just a couple tanks against a couple tanks. That's U.S. and German. And, but it does come with, to I believe, tokens, dice, rule book. Again, pick it up, buy it, get started. No infantry in that one. And then there's also a Stalingrad one. So if you just want to do like the Eastern Front with the Russians and Germans against each other, same concept, you know, a few tanks against a few tanks, same price range as Fury, and all the same uh, things are included. Now, this is true with the other star set I'm going to talk about in this one. So the cool thing is if you like it, then you can start expanding your army with more, you know, soldiers, more tanks, and, and kind of just growing from there. A quick side note, I want to mention the world of tanks. You know, yes, it's the same as the video game that's, you know, out there. It's actually, they have done a collaboration with the company that makes um, Flames of War, Gale Force 9, there's a bunch of companies. But basically, it's a world of tanks starter set. Now, but, um, and it's the same tanks that you would get in some of the sets for Flames of War, but they're built and they're pre-primed. So that's pretty cool. Um, and, but it comes with everything you need to play because it is a self-enclosed game. Now that game, as far as I know, is not going to ever include infantry, at least not for a while, because you know, like the World of Tanks game, it's tanks against tanks. And a lot of people love that. But understand that's a completely different rule set than Flames of War, but I bring it up because you may see it in their catalog because they're you know, affiliated with each other. Now here's the cool thing again. Again, with World War II miniatures, you can buy World of Tanks, try the game out, you may love it, but then you can also use those tanks for Flames of War or other World War II sets. And the cool thing is they're already assembled and primed. So that's something to consider um, when you're looking at that. And when they sell tanks, they're going to sell them that way, primed and pre-assembled. So there's a the step there. But I'm probably going to be a little bit more expensive than you'll get uh, you know, per tank than if you're building them. Okay, now let's talk about a different size game. Let's say you think, man, that's too many miniatures or that's too small. I want something a little bigger. Well and you're thinking maybe 10 to 40 infantry, maybe one tank against another tank, and you know the infantry trying to hold a building or something. The one you'd want to get started with that is Warlords Bolt Action Band of Brothers starter set. They have another starter kit that I'll talk about in just a moment. But the Band of Brothers box set comes with, again, American Airborne, Panzer Grenadiers, a half-track, German half-track, and even some plastic buildings to have some terrain, which I think is pretty cool. Again, a rule book, tokens. They even have a paper ruler if you don't have a ruler, which I thought was pretty cool. So they, they really have everything you need to pop open that thing and start playing. Again, now this, the construction of this is going to be a little bit more complex. You do have to put some heads, some arms, maybe even some guns together on the, on the guys. I um, hope to show you a video where I'm doing that. And so you can kind of see the, the and I'm going to time myself to see how long it takes. So you can kind of understand what it takes to do that. Um, so it's a little bit more work. The minis are um, pretty good detailed. And, and of course, the, the half track you have to assemble too. Um, but there are fewer of them. So maybe it's a balance. It might take about the same amount of time as the Flames of War set. The other set uh, for bolt action is kind of a kitting of materials. And it's the El Alamein. So that's the desert. Um, and so that's going to pit the uh, kind of you know, early mid-war Germans against the you know, British that fought in the desert. So think shorts, uh, you know, tan tanks and all that. <clears throat> and it's a combination, uh, again, I believe there's a tank, there's also a plastic building, but it, they have packaged it together to include the rules, the dice, the tokens, everything you need to play the game. So it's, it's pretty cool that way. 
Um, it's not quite as neatly boxed, I don't think, as the Band of Brothers set, but you get the, the same, same effect. Um, now, both those games also have what they call starter sets for one side, like you can buy a Soviet or British starter set. Uh, depending on the sets, you really have to look. Some of them include the rule book, but probably not any tokens or anything like that. Um, and so what a lot of people do is they might buy the, uh, they might buy that set. Their friend buys the, like I might buy a German set. My friend would buy the British starter set. Now we're all gonna have to buy our own rule book. Well, I'm sorry, not a rule book. Yeah, we're all gonna have to buy a set of tokens, some dice, things like that. Um, but you could do that and you can have what you need. When you buy these other starter sets, like when I, if I were to buy them solo, I'm gonna have both sides, which is not necessarily a bad thing because you can invite friends to come, you know, come play. And I, again, I've left links for bolt action and all those things on the, the blog, which I'll link to in my description, uh, the description below. And, <clears throat> and that'll show you and you know, research that and see, and see what you think. Now, the cool thing about all these sets, you can use these for the minis that you get with these sets, you can use them for any, almost any uh, World War II rule set. And that's, that's a pretty cool thing about playing World War II. Um, is that you can use those for a variety and a range of games, even the basing. And we'll get into all that kind of stuff later. So even if you play one of those two games and you're like, well, I don't know if that rule set's really for me. Well, you still have the minis to play one of the multitude of other rule sets that I will introduce you to throughout this boot camp. So it's kind of a cool, you know, a, a cool thing. And you may turn out and you, you love that. And understand that there are also other mini uh, miniature manufacturers that you can use to play those games as well. Now, sometimes there are restrictions at tournaments and things if that company's putting it on, but you kind of have to talk about that, and that's, a, that's another discussion down there, and I won't talk about tournament play because I don't, I don't uh, game that way. Okay, well, I hope I've given you enough information to kind of think about maybe a couple of starter sets to, to use to play. They're both, they're both fun and enjoyable games, and, and you, I think you'll have a fun time playing them. Um, in the next boot camp, start to explain the eras and time frames and theaters of World War II. So you can kind of understand, you know, why they're different and why you might think about that as you approach, um, you know, this hobby. Again, go click on the link below in the description to go to the blog, to click links, to go check out all those resources. Hey, enjoy the journey, play and hobby your way and have fun. And we'll see you at the next boot camp.